don't forget we have a quiz on Monday covering logic one and logic two. Should be pretty easy. Unless it's not. So we have three questions today. By the way, on yesterday's worksheet, nobody asked about number six. That's kind of an important problem. I'm just curious, how, how did you know if the original statement was true or false? Problem number six. I think we better look at that problem. I think you might see that one again. Number six from logic one. There exist natural numbers A, B, and C such that A cubed plus B cubed equals C cubed. Okay, I'm pretty sure you guys can write the negation, but how do you know if the statement is true or false? How did you get the answer? <laughs> how, did that, how do you know? Oh, Mr. Park, you might have known. Just look at the bottom and then write that down. Okay, fine, do that. But then what's going to happen on the quiz and test? Pain, that's what's going to happen. So how do we know that this is false? What? You read it in the book. Yes, this is Fermat's last theorem. You guys ever heard of Pierre de Fermat? Any, okay, here, let me just tell you. This, this has been a famous, well, Let's just start from the beginning. Okay, for natural numbers A, B, and C, can you find, there? does there exist natural numbers so that A squared plus B squared equals C squared? Yeah, there's infinitely many, right? Because this is the Pythagorean theorem, right? What, what's one set of numbers that satisfies this? What's the most used one on the SAT? Three, four, five, right? This is the Pythagorean theorem. 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25, and so forth, right? But what happens when you make this power bigger than 2, like 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth? Well, in the, in the 1600s, this was like a very famous problem because nobody could prove or disprove this. So this was a very famous, uh, well, that was actually a conjecture because nobody proved it. And then Pierre de Fermat, he was like the most famous mathematician of the day. In fact, at that time, he was probably the greatest mathematician in the world. He wrote in his book, he was like, people said, no, no, you should do this problem because there was a prize. If you could solve this, there was like actual money. Anyway, so he wrote in his book, he always liked to jot notations in his book. I have a wonderful proof for this, but the margins of this book are too small to hold it. So people just assumed he had the proof because he was the best mathematician in the world world at the time. But no one really knew because no one ever saw it, right? And then what happens is when he died, no one knows, right? So people thought he proved it, but then no one really knew for sure. And so this problem just went on. This was like in the 1600s, all the way into the 1900s. And then finally in 1991, this guy from Princeton University, his name is Andrew Wiles. You guys ever heard of this guy? You guys ever heard of Pierre de Fermat? A, anyway, see, look, I even have his autograph in here. Not here to firm up. Andrew Wiles. It's behind the TV here. Right here on this poster. Andrew Wiles, he gave, a, he gave a... See, when he proved this theorem, he became so famous. Because, like I said, every all mathematicians of the world knew about this, this, this thing. And, and once he proved it, then he became so famous. And then every university wanted to bring him into their university to give a lecture. So like fly him in first class, pay him twenty thousand dollars for a one hour lecture. It's probably super rich now. Anyway, so the yes, now we know since nineteen ninety one this is false. Because before then it would have been question mark, we don't know, but now we know. See, if you guys don't know something, you guys better write it on the board because I'm gonna tell you on the quiz and test, it's gonna bite you. In a bad place. Okay, what problems are we doing? Aha! Uh -huh. Very good. I'm glad somebody wrote 2D on the board because super important this problem. 
Okay, here's a conditional statement. Not Q implies P. Write its negation. We didn't learn that, Mr. Park. Well, if you did your homework, if you did problem D, then you would have discovered it. What are you talking about, Mr. Park? Okay, look. Look at problem D. 1D, rather. Make a true table for P and not Q. Okay, I'm just going to give you the result. Okay, okay, okay. It's going to be false, true, false, false. Did everybody get that for D? Yeah, because I don't see it on the board there. Yeah, but how does that tell you anything? Well, what was, what's, look at this. False, true, false, false. Okay, that's not a true table we know, but isn't that like the exact opposite of a true table we know? True, false, true, true. What true table is that? P implies Q, the conditional statement. True, false, true, true. So if you know this one, and then you make a true table for this one, what do you notice about them? What do you notice? It's opposite. It's exactly the opposite. So what does that mean? If this true table comes out exactly the opposite of this one, what does that mean about these two statements? They are negations. And this is like super important. The negation of a conditional statement right here is logically is P and not Q. That's what you figured, that's what you should have learned in problem one. I don't know. You guys probably just did it and just went on to the next one. I don't know, maybe someone did anything to do it. This is so important, you just don't know. Okay, so now we can do this. How do you negate, what's the negation of a conditional statement? Look, what's the negation of gorilla implies banana? Gorilla and not banana. So what's the negation of gorilla implies banana? Gorilla and not banana. Okay. Wait, is this the right class? Lauren Hole? Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the right class. Okay, do you guys understand that? The negation of a conditional statement is an and statement. I bet some of you tried to make up your own, yeah? But then you look at the bottom, you go, what the heck? That's why you got to learn from the homework. Or at least look at the notes. Isn't it in the notes? Did anybody look at the notes? Yeah, that's in the notes. Okay, what about three and four? Wait a minute. Okay, let me ask you, what else did you learn? Okay, after doing the homework, this is what you should have learned. Any conditional statement is logically equivalent to its, this is the example I did on the board yesterday. Contrapositive, not Q implies not P. Okay, that's super important too. But any conditional statement is also logically equivalent to what did what did you learn when you did problem when you did problem E? One E. Okay, here's one E, not P or Q. When you did the truth table for this, you should have got the true, false, true, true, did you? Yeah, so what hey, that's the same thing as this. So what did we learn? They're logically equivalent. So P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna box this. Anyway, by the way, these are all in the notes. These, you just, right now, you just have no idea how important these are. Okay, let's move on. Number three and four. No! Okay, write the negation, okay, for all box, for all real numbers x and y, x, oh, I know why you guys asked this, because you guys didn't get this one. That's why you couldn't get it. What kind of statement is this? Since, look at that symbol. It's universal. How do you negate a universal statement? Existential. So, so for all box, comma, triangle, right? How do you negate that? There exists box such that, not triangle. Now, if this is triangle, maybe, let's call it oval then. If that's oval, how do you, what kind of statement is that in the oval? It's a conditional statement, right? Gorilla implies banana. How do you negate that? We just learned it right here. The negation of gorilla implies banana 
is gorilla and not banana. So gorilla and not banana. So x squared is less than or equal to y squared. If you don't know how to negate a conditional statement, oh, bad, very, very bad. So do you guys understand this? The negation of a conditional statement is an and statement. Gorilla and not banana. Okay, do I have to do, what about the truth value? Could, could you guys figure that out? For all real numbers of x and y, if x is greater than y, then x squared is greater than y squared. That is false. Give me a counterexample then. Here, I'll give you a counterexample. If 2 is greater than negative 3, then 4 is greater than 9. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah? So that's why it's false. If you have a universal statement to prove it false, you just need one counterexample. That's all you need. Okay, number f what? Number five. Number four. Find a statement whose truth table is shown below. So make up a statement that comes out false every single time. <laughs> you have got to be joking me. Well, some people can just make up their own, but okay, let me ask you this. Did you do problem number one? In problem number one, was there a statement that came out either all false or all true every single time? Yeah, problem G. Here, let me rewrite it. P implies Q and P implies Q. If you made the true table for this, it comes out true, 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 true. Did it? What do we call a statement that comes out true every single time? There's a name for that. That's why I put this problem on. It's in the notes. It's called, a, it's called a tautology. Anytime a statement comes out true every single time, this is called a tautology. What happens if it comes out false every single time? It's called a contradiction. Oh, so Mr. Park, now I'm trying to do number four. So if this statement comes out true every single time, what can I do to it to make it false? Just do this. Wow. Right? If this one comes out true every single time, what happens when you put the negation in front of it? Won't it come out false, 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 false? There you go. Okay, but of course, is that going to really help you on a quiz or test? Because what, what if that's not on the quiz or test? You've got to come up with your own. Did anybody come up with their own? That's not this one? Okay, what did you get? Okay, so P and Q, the truth table for that is true, false, 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 right? Not Q is false, true, false, true. And then if you add them together, you get false, 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 false. Very good. As long as yours works. Yeah, in order to do this problem, you have to know how all the truth tables work. Otherwise, it's not okay, yeah? So as, there's an infinite number of answers. As, your, as long as yours works, that's good. Okay, now number five. How come there's so many questions? Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Am I going to really copy this whole thing down? No, Moose Breath! I'm not. I'm just going to do the first part here. Okay. It says, if R is true, if R is true, what is not R? I hope you guys didn't make a truth table for this, right? Because if you made a truth table, it doesn't be true. Right, right? P is true. Now, if you have the biconditional statement where the first one is false and the second one is true, what is that? It's false. Right? Remember, in order for the biconditional statement to be true, they both have to be the same. Okay, now, I don't even have to know that. Why? Because if you have an and statement, the only way it's true is they're both, they both have to be true, but that one came out false, so this whole thing has to be false, right? You try to do as little work as possible. That's the goal here. Now, now I have a conditional statement. I have this. Is, I have a whole truckload of things there. I'm not going to even write it because I don't need it. You don't need to know what that is. If you have a conditional statement and the first part is false, then what? It's true. It's true. Because remember, in a conditional statement, when is the only time it's false? When the first one is true and the second one is false. 
every other time it's true. So once the, if you have a conditional statement, once the first part is false, it's true already. You don't have to do any more work. Did you guys do this part? That's okay, it builds character, but now you know, right? We're trying, we're trying to do as little work as possible. No, Mr. Park, I'd like to do more than this. More than this. Oh, gosh. You're killing me. You're killing me. Okay, number six. Okay, which one are we going to do? What way we would <laughs> Okay, here's number six. It says, isn't this like the example I showed you yesterday? Oh, you guys are killing me. E, not, okay, and then here's Q, it goes over here, and they get OR, and then, ooh, and then what happens is Q branches up, it gets negated, and then here's R, baby, and then these two go together with N, ooh, and then not, and then these two get ended, and then boom, boom. Okay, so in problem 13, if P is true, Q is true, and R is false, what will the output be? Well, if it goes in as 1 and then it gets negated, it goes 0, right? So if this is 1 and this is 0 and this is OR, what? Then the output is going to be 1. Okay, now Q is 1, it gets negated, so it's 0. But R is a, so they're both 0 here, going into N. Two false statements with N is false, but then it gets negated. 1, and then now you got two true statements with N. True. And there you go. Very, very puzzling, people. Okay, what do we, oh my goodness, today we've got to learn stuff. We've got to learn about arguments. Okay, so the quiz is on Monday, the test is on Wednesday. See, because that's because after today we're not learning anything new already. Well, actually, there's one thing we've got to learn. And then you have the practice test for Monday night's homework, and then we're going to test the link. That's all it OK, first of all, what is an argument? OK, now we know what statements are. We know how to make truth tables. OK, but what is an argument? Well, this is the most famous argument in logic. If P, then Q. P, therefore, you guys know that symbol means therefore? Therefore, Q. This is called an argument. Now, what does this mean? Well, everything above the line here, these are called the premises. This is called the conclusion. You know, when is an argument valid? See, statements are true and false. Arguments are either valid or invalid. Okay? Now, how do you tell if an argument is valid or not? Well, if this is true and this is true, if this comes out true, then we call this a valid argument. If you assume the premises to be true, and the conclusion always comes out true, that is called a valid argument. Now, how do you determine if this is a valid argument or not? Can I just, if it makes sense? If you do your homework, then I will pay you $5. You did your homework, therefore you will get $5. Yeah, it makes sense, Mr. Park. Yeah, but then sometimes it's just based on the meaning of the words. It, it really doesn't make sense. So we need a surefire way to determine if an argument is valid or not. Well, if you look in your notes, one way, there's actually three ways, okay? One way is to make a truth table. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, here's the first premise. Here's the second premise. Double bar, here is the conclusion. So what you do is you just make a truth table for this. Okay, hopefully by now we don't need the training wheels, right? Because P is always true, true, false, false. Q is always true, false, true, false. But then these are part of the, the, the thing, so we just put it in. True, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. And then what's the truth table for P implies Q? Have you memorized it? Or are you just going to wait till Monday morning? True, false, true, true. Like I said, ultimately, you've got to memorize those five truth tables and then just figure out everything from that. OK, now how do you determine if this is a valid argument or not? Remember what I just said? Whenever the premises are true, the conclusion has to be true as well. Now look at the two premises. These are your two premises. What line or lines in your truth table show that they are both true? Where are they both true? Line number one. Anything else? 
No, now sometimes more than one line, they'll be both true, okay? But there's only one line there. So when both premises are true, does the conclusion come out true? Yes, so this is a valid argument. Anyway, this is the most famous argument in logic. Why would it be famous if it wasn't valid? In fact, it's so famous, we give it a name. It's called modus ponens. Who takes Latin here? Nobody takes Latin. That's the first time in the history of Yelani that nobody in PCH2 takes Latin. You know it? Quack. Whatever. I get it. I'm not going to ask you what that means then. Do I have to look at your schedule? I think somebody's lying. Anyway, this is called modus ponens. In fact, I'm going to refer to this as modus ponens. Does everybody understand this? Okay, this is the most famous argument in logic. Let's look at the second most famous one. If P, then Q. If Q, then R. Therefore, you can, you can probably figure out, right, what? What do you think you, can you conclude from this? If P, then R. Okay, now how do I show that this is a valid argument? What do, you, what do we need to do? We need to make a truth table. So you put the first, this is what you're doing on your homework tonight. Huh? Here's the first premise. Here's the second premise. You make a double bar, and then you put the conclusion. P implies R. Just simply make a truth table for this. Yeah, but Mr. Park, a tree. Well, then you're just going to have eight lines in your truth table. Now, can you guys, are you guys good at it now? Okay. Or do I need, need, need to make the training well, sir? Because you guys know already, P is going to be true, 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 false, 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 false. Q is true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And R is going to be true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, right? Okay, well, let's just see. Who's going to volunteer to do the first line? I woke up. Okay, so then we need training wheels. <laughs> okay, so here are the training wheels. Don't be afraid to use them. And then true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, Hanoko, fill in the first column. You got the training wheels. P applies Q. Yeah? True. Wait, wait. Yeah, true, true, true. Okay, very good. True, true, false, false. True, 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 true. See, that's good, because look, if you have a conditional statement, once the first one is false, you don't even have to look at the second one. It's true already, right? Because the only time a conditional statement is false is when the first one is true and the second one is false. Okay, who's filling in the second line? <laughs> Quark! Second most famous argument in logic. 
This is called the law of syllogism. Law of syllogism. Some books call this the law of transitivity because doesn't it look like a transitive property? What's that? <laughs> okay, let's go back to elementary school again. What property is this? A plus B equal B plus A. That's called the commutative property of addition. <laughs> you, guys don't, you guys don't even know your properties? Go to your room. What about this? What if I change the grouping symbols? This is called the associative property of addition. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. What is that called? The transitive property of equality. Doesn't this kind of remind you of that? That's why they, some books call this the, the law of transitivity. Okay, forget that. We just got the law of syllogism. Oh my goodness. So the first part of tonight's homework, you have to determine, I'm going to give you an argument. You have to determine whether the argument is valid or invalid by making a true table like this. So all you do is you make a true table, you look, when are they both true? Does it come out true every single time? Like for example, if just one of them comes out false, like if that's false, then this is an invalid argument. Right, because if, if you assume these to be true and only sometimes this is true, then why even talk about it even, right? That's why it's invalid, you guys get it? Oh, it's the same thing. It has to be true every single time. Okay, Mr. Park, is that the only way to determine if an argument is valid? No, there's three ways. That's just the first way. The second way is, try to look at your notes. I think this is pretty understandable. The second way is, okay, let's go back to mode exponents. P implies Q, P, and therefore Q. Okay, what's the second way of showing that this is an, uh, a valid argument? Proving validity. Yeah, right there. B. Look at B. Okay. Are, are you in your notes where it says validity? All right, I just showed you A. Now, what does B say? Okay, why don't you read aloud while I read? No, you read silently while I read aloud. The conjunction of the premises implies the conclusion is a tautology. Say what, girlfriend? <laughs> the conjunction of the premises implies the conclusion is a tautology. Okay, first of all, what does conjunction mean? It means and. These are the premises, okay? So here's the first premise, P implies Q. Here's the second premises. The conjunction of these means you add them, okay? So the conjunction of the premises implies the conclusion. This is the conclusion here, these two are the premises. So if I add these statements together, implies the conclusion. If this statement is a tautology, and what's a tautology again? Yeah, that means when you make the truth table, it comes out true every single time. So if this is a tautology, then this is a valid argument. So if I were to make a truth table for this, if it comes out true, 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 then this is a, this is a valid argument. Yeah, but Mr. Park, didn't we do this on last night's homework? Yeah, that was last night's homework problem. It did come out true every single time. Therefore, this is a valid argument. Oh, Mr. Park, now I'm starting to understand. When, you, when I do homework, you really gotta learn from it. You cannot just do it and put it on the side. Duh, I'm gonna try to tell you that. Okay, is there a third way of determining whether that argument is valid or not? Yes, look at C. I'm not gonna, and in the interest of time, we'll just do that tomorrow. Let me look at tonight's homework. Never mind, I get my own. Tonight's homework. Okay, tonight's homework, you don't need to use uh, method number C, so we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. Okay, so now that we know what a valid argument is, now we can actually deduce things, deduce logical conclusions, okay? So, now the beauty about symbolic logic, we don't even have to look at the meaning of the words. The meaning of the words just makes it more complicated. Okay, so what if you saw something like this? I'll start out easy. 
A implies B. B implies C. A. What is a valid conclusion? What can you deduce? If these are the premises, in other words, if we assume these to be true, what can I conclude? What would be a logical conclusion? See, if you want to be a lawyer, you have to be able to think logically, or even mathematics. You want to be a mathematician, you have to think logically. Anybody want to venture a guess? It's C. Why? OK, look at the first two premises. If A implies B and then B implies C, what can I, what can I conclude from these two? Law of syllogism. A implies C, right? OK? OK, now, I know this is true. A implies C. A, therefore, C. Isn't that modus ponens, the first one we learned? Gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore, banana. Oh, now I get it. Do we understand that, yes or no? OK, that, that's easy. Okay, that, yeah, that's easy. I'm, just, I'm just starting you in the embryo stage, and we at least got to emerge from the womb. And then hopefully, after you do your homework, you can at least walk or crawl. At least. Are, you, are you ready for another one? I'm scared already. You're making me scared. P implies Q, not Q. Therefore, what can you conclude? Yeah. Okay, I heard one answer. Okay, what did we learn from the last two days? Anytime you have a conditional statement, that's logically equivalent to it's contrapositive. What's the contrapositive of P implies Q? Not Q implies not P. Oh, gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore, banana. Modus ponens. You get it? Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you. Are you taking Latin? Do I have to ask each person individually? Do you take Latin? 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 Well, you guys are good liars. Latin? No, so really, nobody in this class takes Latin. Okay. It actually means the method of placing. That's what it means. Now that we know that, it doesn't make sense, Mr. Park. <laughs> okay, does everybody understand this one? Oh, so Mr. Park, modus ponens is important then. Yeah, so gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore, banana. Box implies triangle. Box, therefore, triangle. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> Okay, let's do another one. P or Q, not P. Therefore, these are, we're still in the womb. We haven't even, we, the head is not even out of the womb. We're completely in the womb still yet. Okay, how do I do this? Does anyone want to venture a guess even? I'm scared to guess. Okay, what did we learn? What is logically equivalent to an or statement? Remember about eight minutes ago, I bought something over here. I said it's super important. What did we learn from last night's homework? Okay, let me write it down. A conditional statement is logically equivalent to its contrapositive. Yes. But it's also logically equivalent to an or statement, right? Remember last night's homework? What was it? Not P or Q. Oh, that's what this is, Mr. Park. It's an or statement. So if you have an or statement, you can replace it with a conditional statement. Okay, so how does this work? If I want to, look, you have to be able to go both directions though. If you have a conditional statement, how do you turn it into an or statement? What, what do you do? You negate the first one and you leave the second one alone. If you have an or statement, how do you replace it with a conditional? You negate the first one and you leave the second one alone. Oh, so I have an or statement here. How do I change it to a conditional? You negate the first one, you leave the second one alone. Oh, so Mr. Park, in order to do well in logic, you have to know what statements are logically equivalent to which ones. 
Yes. Hi. That's because, okay, look in your notes. Doesn't it say important equivalences or something like that? If you don't know which statements are logically equivalent to what, you're pretty much doomed. Let the crying begin already. Don't even wait for the test. Start crying now. Oh. Okay, now, oh, look how easy this is. Once you change this to conditional, oh, gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore, banana. Modus ponens. <laughs> so, oh, I get it now. I get it now, Mr. Park. What you want to do is you want to have conditional statements so that you can use modus ponens of the law of syllogism. That's right. But if you don't know which statements are logically equivalent to which ones, it's, it, it, it's, all, it's all over but the crying. That's, that's what it does. Okay, so let's kick it up a notch, one level. A or B. Okay, I'm trying to think here. Silence! I forgot what I'm thinking of. A or B. So not C implies not B, not A. Therefore, what? Okay. Okay, now the first thing you should look for, okay, this is an OR statement. You, you, we we want to replace that with a conditional statement, okay? So what? Not A, not A implies B, right? Because how do you change a con OR to conditional and negate the first, leave the second one alone? Okay, now what can I do with these two statements? Is there a way I can use the law of syllogism? Okay, because, okay, some of you, okay, fair, okay. Contra, what's the contrapositive of this? B implies C. So I can replace this with that. Now, look at these two. If, if gorilla implies banana and banana implies armadillo, then what can I conclude from these two? Gorilla implies armadillo. So if gorilla implies armadillo, and then you have gorilla, therefore, armadillo. Are you guys catching on? OK, so that, that's what you have to do. OK, now look at your homework today. I give you all of these premises, not the first part, not the second part. I give you these premises, and then you have to deduce a valid conclusion. Yeah, but Mr. Park, it's all words. Well, what do you think you're going to do then? Because you don't want to rely on the meaning of the word. So what do you think you're going to do? You're going to symbolize. So like the first problem, look at number three. It is raining outside if chemo is studying. Okay, what do you want to call the statement, it is raining outside? Pick a letter. Okay, R. If R represents it's raining outside, and what do you want to use for chemo is study? K or S? You guys can't even make a, make, a, make a decision. So how would you symbolize it is raining outside if chemo is studying? Is it like this? Or is it like this? this. Which one is it? Or you can use either. This, this. Is it this or that? That and this. It is raining outside if chemo is studying. It's this one. Look at where the placement of the if is. If chemo is studying, then it is raining outside. If you use this one, you're pretty much screwed. Okay? This is the one. <laughs> These are not the same now. If you had the two arrows on it, if it was a biconditional, then it didn't matter. But this is a conditional statement. This and this are not logically equivalent. Uh, the converse is not logically equivalent to the, to the conditional. You guys get it? So what you do is you symbolize each one and make it look like this. And once you make it look like this, it should be easy, right? <laughs> and then the last two problems, look at number seven and eight on the homework, or six and seven. Oh, what are these? These are called logic puzzles. Have you ever done logic puzzles before? <laughs> why, why are you going to ask questions like that? How many of you went to lower school at Yolani? Okay, do you guys remember Mrs. Derby? No. You guys have Mrs. Derby? 
I think they all do the same thing. You guys did actually did logic puzzles in kindergarten because I remember an open house. She was showing us all the things she did, and she did logic puzzles just like this. Anyway, these are like games, logic games. Okay, I, I just I just want to see how you guys do it. I'm not going to even tell you how to do it. I'm not telling. You just kind of you already want me to tell you. Okay, you ever go you ever go to like this thing called the airport? You have to catch these things called airplanes. And then you have to wait a long time before you get on the plane, right? So to pass the time, what do you do? A lot of people do logic puzzles. Like Sudoku. Sudoku is a logic puzzle. Did you, did you guys heard of Sudoku? It's actually a logic puzzle. That's, that's what it is, okay? But there's these other logic puzzles. In fact, if you go to the where they sell the books and things like that, the magazines, they have a whole like a mag whole magazine full of logic puzzles. Anyway, it's just like number six, except they give you way more information. Okay, I'm going to tell you how to do it. I just don't know the spirit. So what you do is you make a three by three game. Yeah, I remember that from Mrs. Derby's class. Okay, who are the three runners? Moke, Moke, and Croak. Moke, Moke, and Croak. And who are the two coaches? Ike, Mike, and Tyke. Mike, Mike, and Tyke. So you make a grid like this. So what you do is you read the information, and then you cross out things that are impossible. And so, I don't know what the answer is, okay? So you read the information, and you just keep on crossing out things that are impossible. Okay, I'm pretending I'm reading. Okay. And then, until there's only one cell left. And once there's one cell left, what, what can you conclude? Oak was the runner. Mike, Mike, that's not even Tyke. Oak was the runner, and Tyke was the coach. That's how you do logic puzzles. Except the kinds of logic puzzles that you get when you go to the airport, they're not three by three. They're like twenty by twenty. So it takes you time to do it, right? So it kills time. Okay, we're done. Class ends in two minutes. I thought, when are we ever going to finish? Our so that means, okay, Monday, we're going to go over homework. i got to teach you one thing that, that see, you know, how to prove validity. And then, then we're done. Okay, so Monday for sure we're going to finish early. I hope. Oh, no, because we have a quiz. The quiz should only, well, should only take five minutes. No, we'll see.